Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Next week is Nurses Week in Ontario. COVID has shown the vital role that nurses play in every aspect of health, but frontline health care workers are reaching out to my office in droves, and many are at the breaking point. Our nurses are working tirelessly, often with minimal support. In Niagara, our ICU capacity is at 108 per cent, and our level three ICU, the highest level, is at 164 per cent. Despite this unprecedented strain on our health care system, this government has yet again refused to support nurses in their work. Frontline health care workers report that when exposed to COVID-19 in the line of duty, they are sent home without pay. While the Premier was able to take 12 paid days for his isolation, the health care workers on our front lines are left with nothing. I've raised the issue of unpaid isolation numerous times with this government and the minister. The Niagara Health System stepped up when this government wouldn't and provided isolation pay while this government dragged its feet. That program expired on March 31st, and nurses are once again left carrying the financial burden and added stress. How is it possible that in our current situation, this government would place additional stress and anxiety on the backs of the workers who are already carrying us through this crisis? Nurses and healthcare workers have been fighting on the front lines. They should not lose one cent of their income when exposed to a virus this government has failed to contain. Shame on this government for their lack of support for our nurses and frontline health care heroes when they need us most. Thank you. Next, we have the member for Burlington. Thank you so much, Speaker. Across North America this week, occupational health and safety is in the spotlight as employers, work, workers and safety organizations focus on the importance of preventing injury and illness in the workplace, at home and in the community. This week has been observed in Canada, the United States and Mexico since 1997. Speaker, for decades, Ontario and Canada have led the way in improving workplace health and safety. Most recently, the Auditor General's 2019 annual report found that Ontario has the lowest time injury rates of any province for the past 10 years. But we can do better. That's why I'm proud that tomorrow, for the first time ever, we recognize Occupational Safety and Health Day in Ontario. Every year on the first Tuesday in May, this day will help promote health and safety by highlighting the roles and responsibilities of employers, supervisors, and workers to support and nurture a health and safety culture every day in every workplace. To mark this inaugural event, I'm hosting a Zoom event together with the League of Champions and health and safety experts from across Ontario at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. To register, please visit janemckennampp.ca slash safety and health. Hope you can join us. Thank you, Speaker. The member for Windsor to come see. Speaker, my thanks to you for chairing the panel that selected Ontario's first poet laureate to honor the memory of Gord Downey of the Tragically Hip. Scarborough's 29-year-old Randall Ajay will be an officer of the legislature for a two-year term. I thought it might be appropriate this morning for a bit of poetry, Speaker. I've called it Randell. He's hip, oh, so hip, our new friend Randell. His poetry is spoken word, he does so well. Not tragically hip, but oh, oh so hip. He's Ontario's first poet laureate. And Gord Downey would be oh so proud, as Randell always attracts an appreciative crowd. The laureate position was named in Gord's memory here in our provincial parliamentary. In doing so, we honor Gord's legacy and Randell brings the same intensity, not tragically hip, but magically hip, yes. Oh, so magically hip. His spoken word, his poetry, creates the possibility to educate and motivate for all of us to appreciate a new modern, passionate, and literate poet laureate. In memory of Gord Downey, and there's no debate, his lyrics, it's been a long time running, a long time in coming, but it's been worth the wait. Thank you very much. The member for Mississauga Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would like to spotlight an incredible organization from my riding of Mississauga Malton, 
serving the community for 35 years. Seven locations in Brampton, Mississauga, and Oakville, with 140 staff who provide excellent culturally appropriate service to newcomers, families, women, and seniors. Indus Community Services is a true community partner. During the pandemic, Indus hosted over 5,000 virtual adult day service sessions, helped over 100 people, 150 people, in fact, Mr. Speaker, file their taxes through their free clinic as part of our government's 12.5 million investment strategy for high priorities community. India's Indus has provided 36,000 people with information on testing and distributed over 12,000 PPE kits. They also created a website, apnahealth.org, which provides information about COVID-19 resources in Hindi, Urdu, Tamil, Bengali, and Punjabi. I want to thank 24 community health ambassadors for going door to door in my writing, talking to the people, and providing them with the information and the resources they need. A decade ago, I served on Indus Community Board, and I'm proud to have played a small part in their journey. I would like to thank Mohini Sareen Chandachi for a lifetime of volunteering, and congratulate past ED Kitty Chada and current ED Gurpreet Malhotra for their dedicated team, for their tireless service, and taking Indus to these heights. With this message, I want to say thank you for your services during this tough time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. Thank you. It's always an honor to rise on behalf of the good people of Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. And for the last year and a half, our residents, in fact, everyone in Ontario, um, has endured so much during the COVID-19 pandemic. So it's been an inspiration to witness the resilience, the creativity, and the innovation in our, in our community. But Mr. Speaker, with spring just around the corner, I'm delighted to highlight some wonderful green initiatives in my riding. The Hamilton Seed Library is an initiative of the, of the local Hamilton gardening community and maintained by Green Venture. It's a hub for folks to borrow, share, and donate seeds at no cost. Another great uh, program or gardening project is the Grow a Row program. This program was a response to the COVID-19 crisis and is a way for local gardeners to help fight uh, food insecurity. So gardeners commit to planting an extra row of produce in their, in their home gardens to do donate to local food banks. Both Neighbor to Neighbor and the Hamilton Community Fridge have been recipients of this and have been able to offer locally grown fresh produce to folks in Hamilton. Um, we also have the Pollinator Project, which is a partnership of uh, Hamilton Naturalist Club and Environment Hamilton, and they're helping gardeners to create uh, spaces for at-risk pollinators. And uh, I'm happy to say that my office is also excited to play a role in growing pollinator gardens. We have pollinator-friendly native wildflower seeds available for individuals and community groups who are interested in community greening projects. So I want to give a big thank you to all of our local gardeners, to all of our community uh, uh, groups who are not only growing gardens, but are also helping to grow resilient communities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Next statement, the member for Don Valley West. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Ontario's Greenbelt is a source of pride to me and to the vast majority of the people of Ontario, not because of any partisanship or politics. Polling numbers show that nine out of ten Ontarians support the Greenbelt and that 86 percent of Ontarians agree that the Greenbelt is one of the most important contributions of our generation to the future of Ontario. It is an act of stewardship of land, water, trees, and wildlife for future generations. In my tenure as Premier, we received literally hundreds of requests to open up the Greenbelt to make adjustments for development. Only in a handful of cases did we respond. We believed that the Greenbelt should never be shrunk, but should only be expanded, which we did and continued to plan further expansions. In Ontario, we have a government currently that has turned back the clock on environmental protection. The Ford government has decided that ministerial zoning orders, which override local decision-making, will be the rule rather than the infrequent exception. They've revisited our government's decision to cancel the building of Highway 413 and are now pushing to build this unnecessary highway against the wishes of local communities and environmental good sense. And now the government has appointed the least environmentally responsible former environment minister in Ontario's history to chair that body, the, the, green, the chair of the, uh, the Greenbelt Council, Mr. Speaker. Norm Sterling oversaw the tragedy of Walkerton. He voted against the Greenbelt Act and he argued for a decrease in the size of the Greenbelt in his debate of that bill. The Ford government claims that it supports the Greenbelt, but there is absolutely nothing in its actions that support that claim, Mr. Speaker. Next, we have the member for Scarborough Agent Court. 
Good morning, Mr. Speaker. In the last few weeks, we have heard and witnessed increased act of racism against our Asian neighbors and friends. The anti-Asian bigotry, hatred, and prejudice are alien to our society. They contradict Canadian values and traditions. The perpetrator of these crimes do not represent the Canadian and Ontarian people. My riding of Scarborough Aging Cause is a diverse society that enriches our daily lives, and I am proud of it. Over 50% of the residents are from South Asian descent. I have heard from so many of them and listened to their anxieties. I have even participated in two press conferences organized by various community organizations to sensitize the public about these heinous incidents and condemn it. Furthermore, they launched coalition to stand on guard and eliminate such acts. Regrettably, the COVID pandemic exasperated this phenomenon, especially against the Chinese community. I am pleased to say that various community organizations, regardless of their background, and elected officials, notable Canadians, and the public at large are standing up in support of Asian community and slamming such behavior as against our peaceful and law-abiding citizens. Mr. Speaker, it is our duty to condemn these deeds by a tiny minority and educate future generations of the catastrophic result of prejudice, xenophobia, and hatred in our society. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, why does the Premier want to prolong the COVID pandemic? I can't figure that out, and neither can anyone else in this province. Last week, the Premier brought in a half measure on paid sick days after more than a year of pressure from doctors, nurses, public health advisors, and many others. They told him what was needed to stop transmission of the disease in workplace, to bring it under control. And he still won't do what's needed to actually bring the pandemic under control. Last week, the Premier brought in a partial version of what the science table had called for, a ramped up focus on virus hotspots. Instead of providing the vaccine necessary for the hottest outbreak zones, for the amount of time needed to actually win, he gave us much less than we needed. Speaker, this is not the first time he's ignored the science and prolonged the pandemic. In February, scientists told him that if he opened things up, we would have many more cases and many, many more deaths, prolonging the pandemic. And he went ahead and he prolonged the pandemic. More deaths, more misery, more frustration for a public that has had its fill. It's time for the Premier to stop stalling stop with half measures and actually do what we need to do to end the pandemic and let people get on with their lives. Thank you, Speaker. Member for Oakville. Thank you, Speaker, and it's an honour to rise in the Legislature this morning. Uh, this past year has been unlike any that we can ever look back in history to, and it has been truly hard on everyone in my riding of Oakville and throughout the province of Ontario. But it is our first responders who continue to be the experienced frontline duty officers that have experienced the brunt of this pandemic. This past weekend, on Saturday, May 1st, it was First Responders Day, and we all took a moment to thank the incredible work and sacrifices of these hardworking men and women. Despite the extreme challenges and difficulties this pandemic has presented, we continue to rely on them every day, and we count on our first responders to be there when we need them most. Oakville and Halton are fortunate to have great leadership from the Halton Regional Police under the leadership of Chief Steve Tanner, Halton Paramedics under the leadership of Greg Saj, and the Oakville Firefighters under the leadership and direction of Chief Paul Boissonneau that support our community. Whether our first responders wear a police, an EMS, or a fire uniform, they put others before themselves every day on the job. Not only does my community count on them for our safety and health, and importantly, our pandemic response, but they support our community with charity events and educational opportunities. I'm extremely grateful for the accomplishments and sacrifices of the local first responders and responders throughout Ontario. Thank you, Speaker. 
Next member statement, the member for Mississauga Centre. Thank, thank you, Speaker. On Friday, I received my first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine at the Mississauga Hospital in my riding of Mississauga Lakeshore. And I want to thank the hardworking staff, volunteers at the Trillium Health Partners, who ensured the process was smooth, seamless as possible. I also want to thank Dr. Banwat, the, the T, uh, the Tur of the uh, sorry, CarePoint Health for working with me to set up a vaccine clinic for essential workers at SureGood Foods. Workplace and community pop-up clinics began last week at Maple Leaf Foods, Maple Lodge Farms, and will continue this week at Amazon Canada. Last week was World Immunization Week, and we hit some important milestones in Peel. As of Friday, over 531,000 doses have been administrated in Peel. We hit 70% coverage for population over 60 and 40% for all other, other adults, because in the past few weeks, the number of doses delivered to Peel has been among the highest in the province as per capita base. Of the 786,000 doses the provincial uh, pro province expected to receive this week alone, about 151,000, almost 20 percent, will be allocated to Peel for the hotspot community that need it most. Most adults in Peel will be eligible to book an appointment beginning this week. This is the best way to protect you and your loved ones and our frontline health workers. So I urge everyone to take this vaccine as soon as possible. Thank you. Say thank you to the member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Member for London West has informed me she has a point of order. She wishes to raise it. Yes, thank you, Speaker. I rise on a point of order to seek unanimous consent to bring forward a motion to pass Bill 239, the official opposition's paid sick days bill, so we can follow the science table's advice to protect Ontario workers from COVID-19 and make sure no one has to make the difficult choice between staying home if they are sick and paying the bills. Member for London West is seeking unanimous consent to bring forward a motion to pass Bill 239. Agreed? Agreed. I heard a no. 